This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Admitting our faults, our mistakes, our misdeeds, and yes, our sins can be rather intimidating. It may not be eating a bottle of glue, but be it from fear of vulnerability to a desire to appear more together, more self-controlled than we actually are, fessing up to the wrongs we commit is not something that comes naturally. We'd rather keep those things hidden, out of the public eye and shrouded in darkness. Now, I may have been a little more inclined to admit my wrongdoings to my parents as a kid based on the fact that I was an only child. I mean, when mom or dad found something broken in the house, for instance, I didn't have the luxury of blaming a sibling. But it also helped that my parents were pretty fair when assigning a punishment for something I did wrong. I mean, justice was served, but it was always tempered with mercy. And even in the midst of being punished, I never doubted their love for me. But even then... My natural inclination was often to hide whatever it was that I had done instead of owning up to my bad behavior. And of course, our Lord laid out for us that the path to the kingdom, the path to receiving all the grace and mercy of God, is repentance, which begins with an admission of our guilt. But even with him, an all-good and all-merciful and all-loving Heavenly Father, we still tend towards the actions of our first parents, hiding not only what we've done, but our very selves from God, as if that were even possible. Today on the show, we're exploring how to become better at owning up to our sins and receiving God's mercy as we explore confessional Catholicism. Joining us for the first time as a spiritual director on the show is Father Anthony Wick. Father Anthony is a Jesuit priest of the Central and Southern Province, where he currently acts as retreat master at White House Jesuit Retreat in St. Louis, Missouri. He also offers spiritual direction at the St. Louis Diocesan Seminary for 20 future priests there, as well as numerous religious in the area. Father Anthony, welcome to The Inner Life. It's a joy to be with you. One of the things I think that pops up often in people's lives, my life and other people's lives, is um, maybe we just don't see the need to confess something, especially if it's either something minor and or it's something that we see a ton of people doing all the time. Yeah, it seems like society does this. Maybe my parents mm-hmm. did this or my teacher, you know, people of authority or influence over my life. Yeah, they they just do this all the time. So it's not really that all that bad. So I probably don't need to bring it to the Lord. What do we what do we say in that kind of a situation, Father? Right. The problem with that is it's all a horizontal view. It's not a full view. It's not a Catholic view, not even a Christian view. In other words, we're not asking how does this affect God's heart? We're asking, how do I compare to others? It's a sociological view. Like, do most people struggle with this? Oh, they do. Well, I guess it's not that bad. If if it if they sure. use the internet similarly as I do, you know, I guess we're all fallen creatures and we just have to accept that fact. But it's all a horizontal view, as opposed to again returning to my fundamental relationship being created by and through Trinitarian love mm-hmm. and created to love. God back in return. I'm created for that to praise, reverence, and serve God, or to know, love, and serve God in this life and to be with Him in the next, as we yep. used to repeat in the Baltimore Catechism. Yeah, sure. And so our perspective, Patrick, is is horizontal. Like compared to others, I'm not doing so bad. You know, sometimes people will start a confession with Father, I haven't killed anyone. <laughs> I'm right. like, well, that's great. Yep. <laughs> so they immediately start with a comparison, like to find a little security that I, I, I'm just glad that I'm not like some others or something like that, huh? Mm-hmm. And and we're not looking at God's heart. We're we're um, perhaps overly focused on even a list of sins, even an examination of conscience, which could be of help. But we're instead of how does how do I stand in God's heart? What are the things? What are the ways in which I hide from living within the heart of God? So that's simply our our common way of, our point of reference is off. When I'm comparing myself to most Catholics, how are they acting? Most religious, most priests, what am I doing better than average? That's only a a human comparison. It's not objective. And frankly, I'm made to be a greater lover than that, uh, more sensitive and and perceptive of the heart of Christ. That's the Marian heart, right at the the heart of the church, to be more Marian. Mary leads us in a proper confessional attitude to come clean to the Lord in everything, to open up every crevice of my life Mm -hmm. where I tend to hide to the Lord's loving gaze. That's the generous soul, huh? Uh, That that is open to the Lord in magnanimity. That's to have a large soul, to be loved on by the Lord. That's the key. And then I want to love the Lord back. And I 
easily and often come clean with any ways in which I start to put myself at the center, uh, in ways in which I'm trying to justify myself, in ways in which I, I call it a Copernican revolution, Patrick. I think we all need a Copernican revolution. In other words, <laughs> we really, we really do believe that the the sun rises and sets around us. You know, we even say sunrise and sunset. We know that Copernicus helped us realize that no, it's actually the Earth rotating and the sun right. is actually stable. But boy, in the spiritual life, I I don't know a Catholic yet who doesn't struggle with believing in the Copernican revolution. Meaning, God's in my purview. I have God in my life, but it's my life. And God's in my orbit. I love having Jesus in my orbit, but I'm at the center, you know, and I'll, I'll go back to Jesus when I feel like it. And I'm glad he's in my orbit. See, the, the notion is completely off, whereas I'm in his orbit and I need to attune myself more to the heart of God, to Jesus's heart. Then I truly find myself. But we need the Copernican revolution over and over again. There are just so many ways we slip away from it. I love that. I love that illustration of putting Jesus, putting God where he belongs in the center, that we are orbiting around him, right, rather than him of us uh, or him orbiting around us. I love that, Father. Thank you for that. But one of the things that I think goes hand in hand with this, so I'm doing just as well, if not better than the people that I'm viewing around me, this horizontal perspective like you were just talking about, that can go on to affect our relationship with God too, right? Like even when you're suggesting that, there's part of me, I'll be honest, that is is saying, yeah, but God sets these impossible standards. One, you know, who can live up to these things? Where, you know, I, I never, you know, I never have an impure thought. I never uh, take out on somebody my own frustration, my own anger. You know, whatever it might be, right? And and so then we're almost. It's like we turn away from God. But I think that is probably rooted in a misconception of God and His love for us. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that, Patrick. Thank you for your sharing that vulnerability. Yes, where the natural ends, the supernatural begins. So it's actually a good thing when I'm at the end of my rope. I have Mm. nowhere to go but God. Like, I can't seem to stop this thought. I can't seem to stop this temptation. I can't seem to stop falling into gossip, whatever it is, okay? Whatever my, my flavor of sin, my flavor of selfishness is. I can't seem to stop it. Well, that's actually a good place to be because only God can help me get beyond this point. St. Paul says that, for instance, the law, the law of the Old Testament is meant as a strict pedagogue. Uh, So in other words, a strict teacher who kind of wraps our knuckles to show us that we can't do it. We need the grace of God. We need a relationship with Jesus to live this higher life. We can't do it on our own. It's really good to recognize that. So when you and I have such a hard time not... um, dissing someone or holding on to negative thoughts of them or judging them or whatever addictive tendency we have, whatever drug of choice, we all have drugs of choice. Some of them are healthy, some of them are unhealthy, but whatever my drug of choice is, and I can't get beyond it. It's like the first step of the 12 steps, right? I have to admit that I'm powerless over this, this addictive tendency. I need God's help. That's a beautiful initial recognition to invite God into those deepest recesses of my being where I just can't seem to to do this on my own. And that's exactly what the Lord would like to hear from us. That means we need his help. And we start to open up in a new way into that relationship to allow Jesus to be the strength for overcoming whatever I'm, I'm struggling with. This entire episode of The Inner Life is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening. 